In this video, we're going to take a look at navigating in Device Road 2's application, as well as viewing some of the discovered data that you pulled in from the discovered jobs. First, you'll notice there's a lot of different menu items, and as you hover over, you can see different CIs. These are This is how Device Road 2 is classified, including device classifications here. And all this information is going to be automatically populated and correlated where it's supposed to go from the discovery. So from here, I'm going to click on Devices, All Devices, and I can see a list of every device that's in the system. This brings up a list page where you can sort by columns, you can do filters, so I can filter, let's say, by physical server. I can also use this search at the top to really narrow down the list of what I want to look at. It makes it a lot easier to find information in the system. It's also found across the board on any of the CIs that you see. By selecting this particular server, I'm going to start with a physical host to show you some of the properties that we captured. There you can see things like a hardware model, the serial number, the UID. Scrolling down, I can see CPU, I can see memory, operating system, version number. All these things are interactive as well. So just by selecting this, I can get to every other host that's running VMware inside the system. Device 42 will discover MAC address information, IP address, even connectivity to the switch. So as you start using SNMP against your network here, you start tying these two pieces together where you can start to see all your NICs and exactly what port you're connected to to the switch. Going through some of the other tabs, like the Lifecycle tab, if you've ran the warranty sync, uh, depending on the vendor, we can pull in information like um, you know, your service contract. So seeing anything for like a Dell or IBM or Lenovo server, we'd be able to associate um, you know, end of service dates for that. Going into the other tab, you can see BIOS information. So seeing it, being able to see that firmware on any of your physical servers, that can get pulled in from the discovery. Job. Your parts, we start populating CPU, memory, HBA cards, and, and this is coming in from a various of scans, you know, VMware, um, Windows for using WMI or SSH and against your Linux servers, and we're able to populate this data and correlate it to that machine. Things like your mounts, all your showing available disk space, as well as what VMs are associated to the host, this is all coming in through a discovery job. Now diving into any of these virtual machines, and if I pick this one here, you'll see very common information or very similar information, including the relationship to the host. But you'll also see a couple other tabs here. We've discovered the software that's installed in this server. So I can see version um, as well as, you know, when it was first detected, when it was last updated. I can also get to all the software just by clicking on this. And this takes me to another section in the tool that I'll show you in a second. And then you can also see services. So what's nice about this is Device 4 will discover any uh, registered or running service, as well as a scheduled service. So very similar, if I click on this, this will take me to another section in the tool where I can view all my software that's installed, as well as all my services that, 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 that are installed uh, or that were detected on the network. So going into software, I can go to software components, and I can see any given piece of software and how many of that software counts that we found on the network. So if I wanted to, I can go in here and type in Oracle database, and I can find any software component that might have been that might have came in as Oracle. Some of these are marked managed. These are all things that you can do afterward uh, to help organize the data. Going into any of those software components, you can also see the version as well as which devices are using that particular software. So again, as I mentioned, everything is very interactive. Going under apps, you can see services and see all your schedules of services. So any crons or task schedules that, that were discovered on a machine get pulled in here. We can also see your um, ser uh, your individual service instances, so every instance of the service, as well as groupings of that service in the system. So here I can go in here and if I want to look at Apache, I can look at any discovered service that might be running Apache or a Java service that has some type of, uh, that might be uh, running Apache, and then as well as the number of instances for that um, Apache web service here. So just by clicking on it again, I can see each device that's running this service, and this links me actually to the, to the actual service instance. Under apps, I can also see application components. So part of what Device 42 offers is application dependency mapping, which includes that services piece that we're looking at. But I can also discover common applications that might be running in your network. So for instance, IAS or Apache or Microsoft SQL or Oracle or MySQL. These are all very common, broadly used applications that, that are out on the network that customers are using. And Device 42 can support this by being able to discover that application and then being able to associate which device we saw that application on, as well as what services can relate to that application. So here you can see that we've grouped services to the actual application component. Now lastly, looking at the network side of things, 
Device 42 does discover all your IPv4, IPv6 addresses. It also can discover all your VLANs. There is an option when you're going into VLANs to be able to do a smart merge. So if you start to see common VLAN numbers, this is because we're seeing this on every switch. So if, if, uh, if these are all VLAN numbers are unique in your network, then you want to go in here and say, let's smart merge that and it'll treat it as a single record. And if you notice under network subnet, this is going to give you a list of all the subnets that were discovered. A lot of this data is coming in through your Windows scans, your Linux scans, because we can see the subnet mask, as well as your SNMP scans, because we can see the subnets that are on any network device that's out. One of the nice things about this is you can also see the usage of that particular subnet. So you start to be able to see how much space is available or how many IPs are available in each of the given subnets. Well, that concludes this video, and I'd like to thank you for listening.